Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. You know, today is considered all across the world as one of the most holy days on the calendar. Now, why is that? Because there was someone that came to this earth. His name is Jesus. He lived a life, perfect life. He was the God in the flesh. And then he took upon himself all of our sin and wrongdoing. And he died on a Friday. But three days later, he would resurrect from the grave, defeating sin and death for all of us for all time. So that's why we gather on a beautiful day like Easter Sunday. That's why we celebrate and that's why we rejoice. So if you're here, if you're traveling from far, I met um, Russ and Jay in the hallways. They're coming all the way from Arizona, I believe. And we also got a few others that are coming from Houston. They're here in the room today with us. Whether you're coming from far, whether you're driving from up the street, whether you're online today in our overflows, we want to say welcome. We believe that this is a church, this is a place where you're not here because you're perfect. How many know we're not perfect? If you're perfect, let me know. I need to take notes. I need to learn from you. This isn't a place for perfect people. This isn't a room for people that have it all together. This isn't a room for people that, um, as a matter of fact, I'm not even up here claiming I'm perfect. I'm not here to point at you and say, get your act together. That's not me. We're here to not look at me, to not look at them, even though they look amazing. You look amazing. We're here to look at one person. His name is Jesus Christ. The only one in this room that's perfect. That's why we celebrate and rejoice. Because Jesus today, he's making an exchange. He's giving you an offer. He wants to exchange your imperfection, your pain, your worry, your hurt, hopelessness, and your loss. And he's saying all of that that you have, all the baggage you're carrying that no one else knows about, I can carry that. I'm strong enough, Jesus is saying, to carry all of that. And if you feel like you've been getting weaker, it gets harder to just get through the days and get through the weeks. The marriage is getting tougher. The family, there's stress in the family. The finances are just causing anxiety to you. God is saying, you're not meant to do life alone. Put that upon me. I'm strong enough. And instead of the hopelessness, I can give you hope. I can give you peace. I can give you joy. And I can give you life. That's the exchange he's offering to you today. So you're in the right place. So if you hear anybody in the room that's shouting and getting excited and they're clapping, it's only because they met Jesus at a, at a, at a time where they were down. They met God at a time where, where, where they were broken inside and they had no hope and they didn't know where to turn to. And Jesus said, it's okay, I got you. I'm strong enough. I will take your sin. I will take your burden. I will take your shame upon me and I will give you my love. That's why we're excited today. That's why we're gathering in this room and that's why we're celebrating. And so I want us on the count of three to just practice giving God some praise because he defeated all the things you can't beat, he beat it already. So let's practice giving God praise this morning on Easter Sunday, are we ready? It might get a little loud in here, but that's okay. We're, and I think it's okay to shout for Jesus. You do it for the Dodgers, you do it for the Lakers, you do it for your favorite sports team, but why not do it for the champion that won on your behalf and purchased your freedom today? So on the count of three, we're gonna give Jesus the biggest shout we can give him. Are you ready? Here we go. One. And I want you to get excited. And we're gonna shout like if he won your battle. Are you ready? Two. It might get a little loud in here, but that's okay. We're celebrating, here we go. One, two, three, shout. Thank you, Jesus. You're alive. He defeated sin and death. All bondage is broken. All lies are now in hell. Everything the devil tried to do to conquer you, Jesus defeated all of it. serve a good God. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to study the Bible. I'm not here to give you my own opinion because my opinion doesn't matter too much. We're going to learn from the word. 
the Bible describes, there's so much in here. You'd be surprised how much your life, how relevant this is to your life today. It's not outdated. It's not irrelevant. As a matter of fact, the more I read it, the more I realize, wow, it's like if Jesus put this all together for 2024, he knew exactly what was going to happen. We're going to learn from the word today about what God says about you and how much he loves you. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today. We want to hear from you. We want to learn your word. You have a word for everybody in this room. This isn't just a broad overstatement. No, this is an individual conversation you want to have with the person that's sitting here, that's standing here today. We pray that you would speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. And we all say amen. amen. You want to take your seat, tell your neighbor, happy Easter or happy Resurrection Sunday, whichever, whichever. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Pastor Christian. I'm the campus pastor here. Just early, praise the Lord. Just earlier, you heard from Pastor Marco. He was up here. He's our senior pastor. I just want to take time to honor our pastor. He is a great man of God here. He didn't ask me to give him a shout out this morning. But, you know, this church really did start as a place for the brokenhearted to come and receive the goodness and the love of God. And that's what we're going to learn today about how much God loves us. He has a plan for us. And he has a purpose for each person that's in this room. You are not a mistake or an accident. There's, there's no coincidence that you're here today. It's not by chance. You probably, you probably feel like you got dragged here, but God set, the, God set up your dragger to bring you here. So, <laughs> so you're here for a reason. I want to talk about what Jesus did for us. The title of today's message is Jesus Did It For You. Someone say Jesus did it for me. Well, we're going to learn about what Jesus actually did for all of us. You know, when I think about the light, when I think about what Jesus did, there's so many, there's so many good things he's done for us. And, and I was actually just looking up some incredible stories of heroes that we've seen in our time of people that would love somebody so much that they would do something incredible for them. I heard a story. It was a, a story of actually a cop in New York. It was a cold November night in Times Square. Has everyone, anyone been to New York during winter season? It's freezing. My wife was there when it was, I think, what, how, what was it? Nine degrees, single digits. I'm from California. Nine degrees, you might as well, I'm frozen. I'm ice. There's, I'm, not, I'm not made for that, praise the Lord. If you're watching from New York, God bless your soul. <laughs> but it was a cold November night in Times Square. Officer Lawrence DePrimo, he was working a post when he encountered an older, barefooted, homeless man. The officer normally, he's assigned to this area. He readily, he, he recalled the, the encounter. What he said was, it was so freezing, you could see the blisters on the man's feet. It says in an interview, he said he, he had two pairs of socks on at the cop, and it was still cold. Just imagine a man with no socks or shoes. So he asked the man, he talks to him, he says, what size shoe are you? The man says, size 12. So Officer DePrimo, he disappears for a moment, and he returns with a brand new pair of boots for him. He knelt down to lace up the man's feet and put on the shoes. He went over to a, it was a Skechers store that he went to. Shout out Skechers. I don't wear Skechers. If you do, praise the Lord. They comfy. He went to the Skechers store, and the manager was shocked of what the officer was doing. And the manager said, we were just kind of shocked. He said, uh, most of us are New Yorkers, so we're just kind of, we're used to seeing that. We just kind of pass by that kind of thing, especially in this neighborhood. You see it, and you just walk by. But this officer, he volunteered to do the right thing. He purchased the shoes with his own money. He bought it, he helped lace up this man's feet by himself and he did it with no, no thought of being recognized. And a random tourist actually caught this picture. He didn't do it for the cameras. He did it just as an act of kindness. What a selfless thing that someone would do for somebody. 
What love that is. There's another story I, I actually heard of, a lot more intense. It says Lance Corporal Carpenter. He was a Marine. He was manning rooftop security in Afghanistan when the enemy initiated a daylight attack with hand grenades. One of those grenades landed inside where there was their sandbag position. But without hesitation and with complete disregard for his own safety, Carpenter threw his body onto the grenade in an attempt to shield his fellow Marine from the deadly blast. When the grenade detonated, his body absorbed the brunt of the blast, severely wounding him, but saving the life of his fellow Marine. He was only 21 years old at the time. He lost most of his teeth, his right eye, shattering his jaw, breaking his arm in a number of places. But because of his courage, he was able to save the life of his friend, his fellow Marine, his brother. He became the youngest living Medal of Honor a recipient, the soldier ever to receive that Medal of Honor. What a careless act, I mean, what a selfless act. He didn't care for his own life above his brother's. He did it to, to, to be there for somebody that he loved. These stories are heroic stories. They're touching, they're inspirational for us. And when I hear those stories, it makes me wanna do something good for somebody. But the reality is there's only so much good I can do for another person. I'm sure many of us want to be good people. We want to live better lives and we wanna be an inspiration to others. One day, hopefully, they'll write a story, an article about you about something you've done for somebody. But the truth is that all of us can only do so much. And even for those that we love, there's only so much we can do. But there's another story of another man. I know that these two stories we heard about other people, but there was one story about a man who did something heroic for you. This man came from a place of royalty. He had all authority and power. He left it all in heaven, and he came to filthy earth. He came to dirty old earth. He lived a life. He was perfect. He lived away from sin, and he loved the people that were rejected and lost. He healed the sick when everyone else would outcast them. He was there for those that were considered outcasts and hated by all of society, and he had dinner with them. He would conversate with them. He would love them. He would be there for them. He would wash their feet. This man, his name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus, not only was he there to heal the sick, to heal broken hearts, and to reconcile those that were lost to back to the love of God. But not only did he do that, but Jesus himself put his life on the line for you. He died on the cross so that we can be set free, so that we can have a new start, so that we can be healed and delivered. These stories of these inspirational men, they're inspiring to hear about what they did for maybe a stranger or what they did for their brother, but the story of Jesus is not for somebody else. The story of Jesus is what he did for you. Jesus' story, his life, his death, his resurrection, what Easter is all about is what Jesus did for you. And today, what we're learning and what we're talking about is what Jesus did for you. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. And he is not giving up on you today. When everyone else feels like, when you feel like everyone else has given up on you, Jesus is not giving up on you when you've given up on yourself, Jesus today is saying, I am not giving up on you. I love you. You may, be, you may feel like a homeless man that has nothing in the spirit. You may feel like someone that's in danger of attack. But Jesus is saying, I will put my life on the line so that you can have a new beginning. This is how much Jesus loves you. He gave it all for you. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 2, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. First point I want to get to us, what did Jesus do for us? He didn't 
come off of the cross. He stayed on the cross for all of us. What does that mean? Why did he stay on the cross? Well, Jesus, his mission, when he came, his mission was this, to rest, to seek and save those who are lost and to give up his life as a ransom. What does all that mean? It means simply put, we made the mistake and Jesus came for this purpose, to pay for all the sins and the mistakes that we made. The purpose of the cross was so that Jesus would pay for all of our penalties, for all of our wrongdoings. By show of hands, how many people in here you've sinned before? Okay, cool, I was hoping I'd, everyone raise their hand. If you didn't raise your hand, that was a sin, because that was a lie. <laughs> so you can raise your hand now. <laughs> We've all sinned. And the Bible makes it very clear, there's a penalty, there's a price. There's a wage for sin. Sin is not free. It's a dangerous game we play when we think we could sin scot-free and get away with it. But the reality is, there is no getting away with sin. If I've sinned, if I've willingly made the decision to lie, to cheat, to steal, to be angry at someone, to, to curse at someone, to do any of these things, which we all have done. If I've done those things willingly, then I owe a high, high price. Some sin feels good while it's happening. Some sin is pleasurable in the moment. But in the end, it leaves us with a high, high cost. And the question to you is, is it really worth it? Is it worth it to live in that? Because the truth is, if I live in my sin and I carry my sin all the way to the end, then the, the fact is this, I have to pay for it when it's all said and done. There's no dine and dash when it comes to this. Some of you have dined and dashed before. I saw, come on, he's confessing. Hallelujah. He raising his hand. He said, that was me. You went to Denny's. You got your favorite meal. You saw the bill. You said, mm-mm. I ain't got that right now. So uh, I'm going to wait till they're not looking, and I'm going to get out of here. And you left without paying. I don't know how many of you, maybe it was just him, but hallelujah, he's raising his hand like, that was me. But life doesn't work that way. We can't dine and dash our sin. You can't eat the, the pleasures of sin. You can't eat the pleasures of your addictions. You can't eat the pleasures of the wrongdoings. You can't eat the pleasures of all these things and expect not to pay for it in the end. There's a day called judgment when we will pay for our sin. I know this sounds like bad news, but the good news is coming. This is the bad part of the story. And God knew that, the, that because God is just and he's holy, that there must be payment for the sin. There must be reconciliation. It must happen. But because God loves us so much, the scripture that Kurt shared earlier, he gave his one and only son. Why did he give his son? To pay your bill. Your bill had to be paid for. And Jesus says, I know you don't got it. Because in order to pay that, you would spend an eternity in hell trying to pay for your own sin. But Jesus came and said, I got it. I will front it for you. I will pay it for you. You don't have to pay me back. You don't have to cover the bill. Just surrender your life to me. Give me everything you have. And I will pay this bill that you cannot pay. You know that you can't pay your bill with your good works. You can't pay your bill with how much money you've made this year. You can't pay your bill with how well your kids are doing in school or how, how athletic they are in their sports programs. This is no way to pay for the sin that you and I have decided to, to willingly partake in. There is zero way for us to pay the bill. You know, we could spend a thousand lifetimes doing everything right, but it will not make up for even one of the smallest sins we've committed. There's no amount of good I can do to pay for that. But Jesus was perfect, without blemish, without fault, and he willingly jumped on that grenade for you. And he said, I'm going to give my life up for the person that could not pay for that sin. He gave up his life for you and me. This is what Jesus did for you. He stayed on that cross. 
Did you know, this is a fact, did you know that at any moment while Jesus was on the cross, he could have gotten off? The, the, when he was crucified, there was no one that was keeping him there except himself. I know that we think, man, those nails kept him on there. Those nails didn't do a thing. The nails were part of the judgment, the price that we should have paid. And Jesus took the nails in his hands in order to pay for our sin, but they didn't keep him up there. You know, his nails and his feet, those nails went through his feet, but those nails didn't keep him on the cross. His love for you kept him on the cross. But he stayed on the cross for you. You know, the Pharisees at the time, they actually mocked him. They said this, look at it in Matthew 27, 40. They said, look at you now. He's on the cross while this is happening. They said, look at you now. You said you're gonna destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. They're laughing at Jesus while he's on the cross. And they mock him and say things. They say this, well then, if you are the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The enemy, these Pharisees, they try, to, they try to manipulate, try to mock Jesus and get him to come off of the cross. But Jesus stayed up there for you and me. He stayed on the cross for you and me. Any moment he could have taken himself off, but he didn't do it. He stayed on the cross for us. Jesus could have responded to them by saying, I'm not up here to save, I'm not here to save myself. I'm on this cross to save you. It says right there, they said, go back to the scripture, please. It says, that, they said, if you are the son of God, save yourself, save myself. Jesus had no sin. Jesus was without fault. Jesus was perfect. He was all loving and all caring and all powerful and all knowing. God in the flesh walking among us. He had no reason to be on the cross except to save you and me. That's why he was on the cross. He could have, if he wanted to, looked at the Pharisees in the eyes. He could, maybe that's what I would have said. I'd have been like, I ain't up here for me, I'm up here for you. But Jesus is a lot more patient than me. And instead of saying those words, this is the things he said. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. While he's being mocked on the cross, he's pleading for the forgiveness of their sins. While we spit on the face of Jesus with our lifestyle, we say, God, I'm going to give you my life. And we turn right back to the old ways and we reject God and we abandon him until next Easter. He's still pleading for you. He still loves you. He still cares for you. And he still desires a relationship with you. Jesus stayed on the cross for you and me. How many are thankful that Jesus stayed on the cross? He stayed on the cross to pay for our sin. It says in 1 John 2.2, 2, he gave his life to pay for, your, pay for our sins. But he not only paid for our sins, he paid for the sins of the whole world. Even ev So every moment of mockery, every moment of whips and nails and beatings and betrayal, all of this was for the purpose of paying for our sin. A debt that you and I could not pay, he paid it. And when he paid it all, he went all the way to the end, he said these words, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished actually translates, it's this word, I'm gonna do my best here, tetelestai. If you're a Greek scholar, Meet me after and correct me on how I'm supposed to actually say that. What does this word mean? It means paid in full. When Jesus went to the end of the cross, he declared that the payment for your sin was paid in full. A bill you could not pay. 
a situation you could not get out of, bondage that you could not break, addiction you could not be free from, depression that seems to oppress you, the anger that always boils up inside of you, all these things that you can't get set free from. God is saying, don't worry. That's all been paid in full. Now you can be free. You can be whole and you can have life and you do not have to stay bound under the penalty of sin anymore because I paid it in full. How many are thankful that Jesus paid your sin and my sin? I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. But Jesus loved you enough and he stayed on the cross for you and me. Give Jesus praise if you're thankful. He took your place so that he could give you his. 1 Corinthians 5.21 says, Christ didn't have any sin, but God made him become sin for us so that we can be made right with God because of what Christ has done for us. This is incredible. Listen, Jesus literally, while he was on the cross, carried every one of our sins simultaneously all at the same time. We always talk about the suffering that Jesus went through, the whips and the nails and the, the beatings. Some of us, you, you stub your toe and, and you're calling in sick. <laughs> I can't make it today. I, but I'm sorry, boss. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing well. What's wrong? Oh, man, I can't walk. I'm, <laughs> something, I'm just, I can't move. I can't breathe. What happened? I stubbed my toe. I stubbed my toe. This, it's true. It's reality. Some of, I mean, I just talked about how I can't handle nine degree weather. Jesus went through these beatings and all these things. And we talk about that and how much suffering he went through. But we don't talk a lot about how he suffered, not just on the outside, but he suffered on the inside as well. You know, the Bible says that he went through so much stress Leading up to the cross, because he knew what he was, be he was beginning to bear, that he began to sweat blood. That's such a rare condition. It's so rare. I don't think any, I don't think any of us have sweated blood before. But Jesus went through this. Just imagine being perfect without sin and that all at the same time, the all of sin of all humanity from past, present, and future all rests on him. Every sin you've committed, everything you've done, everything that I've done was on him at that cross 2,000 years ago. And he was bearing the weight of feeling, I'm an adulterer, I'm an abuser, I'm a liar, I'm a cheater, I'm, a, I'm hateful, I'm an addict, I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm a rapist, I'm all of these things, I'm a murderer, all at the same time, Jesus became our sin. I know it sounds so passionate about this, but, but this is why it's so important for us to understand. It's that everything you did, Jesus carried that on the cross for you. He became your sin. He became your sin so that you can become the righteousness of God. So that you can be free. So that you can be whole. There is no greater moment in history than the moment that Jesus dies, pays for our sin, and then three days later resurrects from the tomb so that we can be rescued and saved and set free. This is the most important story, the most important news that we will ever hear in our lives, that you do not have to stay bound in your sin anymore. But because of what Jesus has done, you can be totally set free, redeemed, and have a new beginning. Don't you think that's good news? This is good news. And I'll sum it up with this. Not only did he stay on the cross for you, but he also left the tomb just for you. Jesus stayed on the cross, but he left that tomb. The Bible says in Matthew 28, verses 1 through 6, early on Sunday morning. Some will say early. You guys are here early. It's a packed house. You're online. You're here early. 
on a Sunday morning. It was just like this 2,000 years ago. Early on a Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, what does that mean? Sunrise. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the tomb and sat on it. That's just a boss move right there. Just picture, I could just picture the angel. He's up there chilling, waiting for the Marys to pull up. Probably, probably swinging his feet. They're going to be here any minute now. The tomb is rolled aside. The angel is sitting on that tomb. The one thing that would... See, here's the thing. The, 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 the Pharisees at this time, they wanted to seal the tomb. You know they devised to try and keep Jesus in the tomb? They're crazy. They try to get Jesus off of the cross, and then they try to keep Jesus in the tomb. But Jesus is saying, I'm not coming off this cross, and I'm not staying in that tomb, because I'm going to make sure that I make a way for my sons and daughters to have a new beginning and get out of the tomb that they're in. You may be in a tomb of defeat and despair and anxiety and oppression and depression and fear, and God is saying, I'm getting out of that tomb so I can lead the way for my children to get out of the tomb with me. All I'm doing is making a pathway so that they can be free and they can have a new beginning. Is there anyone excited that Jesus left the tomb? He got out of there. The angel spoke to the women. He said, don't be afraid. It must have been scary because the, the guards all fainted when they saw the angel. So said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, okay, who was crucified. He's sitting on this thing. Can I sit on this speaker? Let me sit up here. Hopefully they don't feed back. He's sitting up there like, I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. What does it say? I didn't memorize the verse, so I got to. <laughs> Next verse, please. Verse 6. Then the angel spoke to, don't be afraid. I know you come to see, oh, there it is. But what does it say? He isn't here. He left the tomb. He left the bondage. He overcame death. He overcame fear. I know you thought that Jesus was defeated. I know your situation, you thought it was hopeless. I know you came to remorse and mourn about the death of Jesus. But Jesus can't be held by no tomb. And neither do you. See, this is why this is good news. This is why this is the most holy day of the year. Jesus got out of the tomb, and so can you. He isn't here. Worship team can come up, please. He's resurrected. Someone say, he resurrected. What that means is that he is no longer dead. He's alive. Jesus is not in the grave. Jesus is not defeated. When all your sin was on him on the cross, it didn't weigh him down and now he's gone and now we have no hope. No, our Savior is alive. He defeated all of that sin and death. He defeated your pain, your misery, your shame. He won it all. He won the fight for you. Now how do I respond? You know, these two stories I shared about the cop the story I shared about the Marine, they're honored today because of their heroic acts, because of the inspirational acts. I read so many stories about heroic acts and people that were saved from burning cars, people that were rescued, drowning in the ocean. But just imagine how heartbreaking it would be for somebody to save you like one of those situations. And you give them a quick thanks and never speak to them again. And these stories of people that were saved, they say things, they describe it as if we're family now. We're, we're close now. I, 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 my, my life, I, I owe my life to them. Without them, I would be dead. They become family, they become so tight. They celebrate holidays together, They're, they become one. All of that is great. But 
What about Jesus? Who gave his life for you? Who put it all on the line so that you could be free? He sacrificed everything for you and me. What a shame it would be to be rescued, to have a payment for our sin, to be saved totally and completely, and to reject it. Today could be the day that Jesus rescues you out of the place of bondage and pain and hurt that you've been in. I started with this and and I'll say it again. It's no accident that you're here in this room. You're here for a purpose. And this is the reason why you're here. Because all this time, God has been pleading. Jesus has been interceding and the Holy Spirit, God himself, has been drawing you to himself. And you may be thinking, why someone like me? I've made so many mistakes. I doubt that God loves me. I doubt that he has a plan for me. You know all those doubts about God's love? That's all a lie from the enemy because the devil wants to keep you in your tomb. The devil's trying to seal the tomb up. The devil's trying to keep you dead. But Jesus is saying, I can roll all that away. I can give you a new life today. I can set you free. I paid for your sin on the cross. Your sin, your mistakes, I paid for it. And I can give you a new beginning right now. There's nothing that you have to do to try and earn God's love. Just imagine if a doctor told you, before you can come see me, I need you to heal your disease, then come to me. It doesn't work like that. See, church, and and, and this place is a hospital for people that are sick. Jesus said it himself with his own words, and it's recorded in the Bible. He said, I didn't come for those that think they're righteous. I didn't come for people that think they're perfect. I came for people that recognize I am sick inside, and I need a healer. I came for the sick. I came for the hurting. I came for the person that feels worthless. I came for the person that feels like they've backslidden way too far from God, and you can never bounce back. I came for the person that feels like there is no good in your future. I came for the person that cannot seem to break your addiction. I came for the person that's insecure in your heart. You have no sense of self-worth as a woman or as a man. You feel so, so much pride and hate for others. I came for you. I came for you. And he's coming today with, the, with his love, with his peace, with his forgiveness, and with this word, salvation. He's our savior. I'm going to ask you this question. If you were to die today, do you still owe the bill or did you give it to Jesus? If you still owe the bill, if you have not given your life to Jesus, then the bill is still on your head. And the only way to pay for that bill, the Bible says, is death. That's the price. That's the wage. The wages of sin is death. And what does death mean? Death not only begins when we die, but death even happens now. We experience death in in misery, in pain. Some of us don't wonder why we're not happy, why we're so full of stress. It's because we're experiencing death of sin, but it continues. When we die in that condition, we experience eternal death, eternal separation from God. It's a place called hell. It was not created for any one of us. But the reality is, If we choose to go there, that's where we'll go. How do I choose to go there? Because I reject my Savior. I reject the only one that could save me. Today, you can receive salvation, forgiveness of your sin. You can hand over the debt, the penalty of your sin over to Jesus on the cross. And you can be redeemed today. I'm going to count to three. When I count to three, I want anybody in here, boldly, to raise your hand if you're saying, I need to give my life to Jesus. I'm ready to repent. What does repent mean? It means I'm ready to change my mind on the way I've been living. I'm ready to turn around from the direction I've been walking and to give my all to Jesus. I'm ready to give it all up to him. 
I know I need a savior. I know I'm sick inside. I know I've made many mistakes and sins, but I need Jesus today. I need him to take my bill because without him, I am lost. I'm gonna count to three. If you're ready to give your life to Jesus today, if you're ready to surrender everything to him, then when I count to three, I want you to boldly raise your hand up and just acknowledge that's me. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. That's me. You're saying that's me. Keep your hands up. I see all those hands. I see all those hands in the back. I see all these hands to my left. I see the, all these hands in the middle. Keep your hand up. Let me see your hand, please. Let me see. I see you guys. I see you guys back there. I see you. I see you. I see you. This is awesome. Can we all stand to our feet? Let's all stand up. Here's what we're going to do. We have a team up here, a team that they've been in your shoes. They came from what you came from. They've dealt with the same things you've dealt with. And, they, and Jesus found them in a place of darkness and God changed their life. And now this team up here, they're gonna help pray with you and connect you. So if you raise your hand today, and if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, I want you to do one more bold thing. I want you to come up and just, we're gonna introduce ourselves to each and every one of you, and we wanna pray with you, and we wanna congratulate you. So if that's you, if you raise your hand, and you wanna give your life to Jesus, will you make your way forward today? Even from that back section over there, will you make your way forward today? We're not gonna put you on the mic, we're not gonna ask you to do a speech, but make your way forward. And if someone raised their hand next to you, just kindly ask them, say, hey, if you want me to go up there with you, I'll go up there with you. Just ask your neighbor really quick, say, if you want me to go up there with you, I'll gladly go up there with you. And church, let's give them a round of applause for all those that raised their hand. Come forward, come forward, don't hesitate. Don't be afraid, come on, this is a time. We're making this decision today. We're gonna follow Jesus, we're gonna live for him. We're gonna surrender our lives to him. A God that's loving, that's caring, that's merciful. Come on, let's get excited, church, this is a big moment. Come forward, if you raise your hand, come on up. so good. God is so good. How many are grateful? This is awesome. For those that just came forward right now, congratulations. It's the best decision you can make. You know, I believe God has such a plan for your life. And what we're going to do, we're going to help you in your walk. We have a class. It's called Holy Warriors. And we also, your next step is to get baptized. Someone say baptized. What does it mean to be baptized? Well, it represents you dying to the old you, but resurrecting just like Jesus did. When I, when I go under that water, what I'm actually saying is, look, I'm dead to the old me. That old lifestyle, my old pain, my, own, my old hurt, my old mistakes, my old sin, I, I'm, I'm laying it all down in the ground, in the grave, and I'm coming up a new creation. So we're gonna help you get baptized. We have a team up here that's gonna pray with you. And when you sign up to get baptized, we have a shirt for you. We have a shirt for you, and we're gonna, we're gonna do a baptism, and we're gonna learn about baptism, and next week, someone say next week, we're gonna get baptized. We're not wasting any time. We're, we're going jumping all in. How many are excited for those that are jumping in, that are making this decision to follow Jesus? I feel so led to do this. A few more seconds of this. Check with your neighbor. Say, hey, look, if you wanna go up there, let's go. Let's go together. Check with somebody, check with the person you brought. Maybe, maybe you're here today for the first time and look, we're not here to put pressure, to put rules on you. We're here to introduce you to the only person that could save you. His name is Jesus Christ. If you're making that decision today, there's no, there's, today's the day to be saved. Today's the day for your life to be changed. I'm gonna give a few more seconds. If you're in the back, if you're in the middle, if you're in the front, you're saying, that's me. I want you to come on up and let's clap for everybody that's coming forward this morning. Come on, a big round of applause for everybody that's making the way up. This is why we wait. Every soul matters to the Lord. Every soul matters to the Lord. Every soul matters to the Lord. This is beautiful. This is the shirt you'll be getting. When you get baptized, we're going to give you a shirt that says, Jesus saved me. Come on, how many know that's awesome? Jesus saved me. So the person in front of you, they're going to pray with you, and they're going to get you signed up. God is so good. 
This is sunrise service. In, in just a few moments, we're going to have our, our regular services, 9 and 11. Pastor Marco is going to bring a word. It's going to be powerful. You can stick around here. Look at it. They came up. Let's give them a hand. They're coming up. God is good. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I'm going to say this with your eyes closed. Just think about you and God in this room. Say this from your heart to him. This is what prayer is. We're just talking to God. Say, Jesus, thank you. I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross to pay for my sin. I also believe that you resurrected to give me new life. Today, I repent of my old ways of living and I give my life to you. I will follow you. I will live for you. My life belongs to you. Thank you for saving me, for forgiving me, and giving me a new start. Fill me with your spirit. Make me a new creation. And give me the strength to live out this new walk in your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Can we give Jesus some praise this Easter morning? Come on, Jesus is alive and so are we. One more shout of praise to King Jesus today. Church, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday. Today is a great day.